So I want to go over a complete setup and breakdown of the barbell bench press. Bench press is kind of the, the king of upper body movements. It allows you to move more weight than any other strict upper body movement does, but I think it's also more technical than people realize. Okay, so when we're setting up for bench press, I think the first thing that comes up as a big controversy is, is whether or not you should arch and whether or not it's good for you, right? Well, when we think about it in the bench press, what the arch is really doing for us is it's give, giving us a little bit of scapular retraction, right? It's helping us get lat activation, and it's helping to kind of lead the way for the humerus to get into a good position so that we don't otherwise fall out of position and cause more anterior shoulder stress. Okay, so when Dan sets up for the bench press, one of the first things you'll find is that there's going to be a lot of variation between grip width, right? So kind of a standard would be somewhere a little bit outside of shoulder width, okay? And as he sets us up from here and he goes into a rep or two, you'll find that that this grip right here is going to get him at a particular angle away from his body with his elbows, okay? So you press back up. Now from here, it's important to recognize that the wider Dan goes with his grip, the wider that elbow position is gonna get. Good. And the narrow he goes with this grip, if we exaggerate a little, the closer the elbows are gonna get to his body, as well as the lower down on his rib cage the bar is gonna get, okay? so. We racks it back on here. Second thing I want to talk about is foot position, okay? You'll find that a lot of people set up with their feet somewhere flat, and you'll find other people that kind of tuck their feet back underneath them and their heels are up off the ground. I think both of these positions are great for the general user, and that I think they both serve different purposes for different people. I think the thing that you want to get out of this, no matter what foot position you're using, is that you're trying to create a good tense base for you to drive off of. Okay, so if we exaggerate this a little bit and Dan brings his feet further out in front, out in front of him, right? But his hips are kind of loose and sloppy here that he's gonna be forced to only use his upper body here. He's got no tension from his lower half to kind of drive off of and he's not gonna be in a good position to start. So when Dan brings his feet back, right? If he comes all the way back so that his toes are tucked back, his heels are off the ground, this might work really well because it allows him to get into good hip extension, squeeze his butt and keep a nice stable base on here. Now, similarly, if he brings his feet out a little bit more to the side and he brings his heels down flat, right? <laughs> He's in the same sort of position, different foot position, but hips are still extended, knees are still nice and tight here, so he's not gonna move anywhere from there, okay? So now, getting back into the bench press position, like we talked about before with this whole arch position, his primary goal is getting his shoulders pulled back, getting his lats nice and tight, so that now when he pulls the bar off, he's in a good starting position, okay? A great cue that I like to use here is, as you're bringing the bar down, is thinking about trying to pull your sternum up to the bar. So as he comes down, you'll see that his chest kind of meets the bar at this midway point, and he can press right back up. If you didn't do this, if we kind of exaggerate the other, uh, the other position you go into, chest sinks, bar has to come way further, and you'll find that his elbows end up driving way past his body, and his shoulders potentially in a compromised position, okay? So that's the first cue that I want you guys to think about. The second one I want you guys to think about is trying to break the bar in half. So we know that we're gonna get a nice tight grip on the bar. We know that we're gonna keep our chest up. Now, if we think about breaking the bar apart, what you're gonna find is that, and you may not see this on camera, but you're gonna create way more tension from your upper back and it's gonna keep you in a much more stable position to get started. We can come back up. A cue that I've kind of stopped using is this idea of tucking the elbows, right? For some people, this cue works really, really well. What I find is for that a lot of other people the goal becomes tucking your elbows in, and what happens is that you over-exaggerate that, and as you come down, your elbows end up way inside the bar, and you're potentially putting way more stress on your elbow than we want to instead of keeping a nice stable base, okay? The last thing I wanna talk about, and we touched on this a little bit, is leg drive, okay? So we already know that we wanna get into a nice, tight setup position. The second thing that we wanna do is we wanna be able to kind of drive from our legs, right? Because this arch is not just about what our upper back is doing here. It's about this global extension that we've got here in a nice tight position. So Dan's gonna come down just like he has before, but on the way up, what I want him to do is I want him to create a little tension to the floor, think like he's trying to push down and out with his feet and get a little bit of leverage driving the bar back up towards the shoulders where it started, okay? Good, so we'll do a couple reps here. And what you find is that as he goes, the legs give a little bit of a pulse and it kind of just helps to get the bar moving. Now. You don't have to be exaggerated with this. You don't have to really drive yourself up and back, but I think this really illustrates the idea here that it's not just about your arms, 
right? It's about your setup position, it's about keeping tension through your whole body, and about creating a good drive to get back into a nice, strong position.